So the special segment for today is clearly a preview for the ECB. The European Central Bank meets in Vienna for a change. They meet twice a year outside their headquarters in Frankfurt. I hope the security there is good enough to prevent another confetti incident like we had last year. Uh, no policy changes are on the cards. Why do I expect, not only me, why, does, why doesn't anybody expect um, a change today? A few reasons. Uh, well, in March, the last time they had fresh forecasts, they introduced lots of stimulus. They increased QE from um, 60 to 80 billion. A big, big change, more than markets had expected. They cut both the main lending rate from 0 0.05 to 0 and the deposit rate from 0, uh, from minus 30 to minus 40 basis points deeper in negative territory. They announced that within their QE, they would also buy uh, corporate bonds and they announced uh, new TLTROs targeted long-term refinancing operations. That's a mouthful, but basically the idea is that the ECB um, lends money in a very cheap interest rate, in this case a negative interest rate, that means it pays banks on the condition that it's lent to the real economy. <clears throat> now, both buying of corporate bonds and these TLTROs are beginning, the implementation begins only now, okay, in June. That's enough of a reason not to act. In addition, back then in March, they told us that they're very reluctant to do anything else and they um, upped the rhetoric uh, for governments to do more. Okay, so that, these are all the reasons why no change is expected. If we'll have more QA or um, interest rate cut, it'll be a big shock, a huge, huge shock and a total collapse for the euro. I don't, it, it will not happen, okay? Uh, then, um, these are the things to watch out for in the press conference. I picked five points. So my five points are, first of all, we have fresh forecast. It doesn't happen every meeting, but it happens today. Um, are things improving? We did see growth moving higher. Germany was 0 0.7 quarter over quarter, and also Spain looks okay. And other countries are also, um, I mean, we are seeing some growth even stronger than in the US in Q1. Okay, that's the good thing. But the ACB's mandate is inflation. Inflation remains low. The last figures released just this week showed uh, still minus 0 0.1 in uh, headline inflation, which is bad news. The ECB's target is 2% or a bit below Negative is not a bit below its uh, total failure, and it's been going on for quite some time. Inflation around zero. Now, even core inflation is not going anywhere fast. It did move up from 0 0.7 to 0 0.8, but it's not good. Okay, so we might have uh, better forecasts for um, growth, but worse for inflation. Okay, in this case, uh, I don't think it'll be good for the euro, because if, if forecasts remain low for inflation, we could have... A weaker um, that, that implies further monetary chain, uh, further monetary easing. Second point, and it's going to be on the cards today. Worth watching. I'm not sure it'll be a market mover, but back in February 2015, one week after the new Greek uh, government came into office, um, they decided not to accept uh, uh, some kind of Greek bonds as collateral, making it harder basically for. Greek banks to have liquidity. This hasn't changed, okay? They did allow the reopening of Greek banks by removing the ELA, the emergency loan um, facility or whatever that's called. But uh, the conditions are still harsh for Greece. So they might announce um, once again that they're uh, lifting this waiver, making it easier for Greek banks to take money from the ECB. By the way, the ECB still does not buy Greek bonds in its QE program. Uh, so that would be interesting. That will be, of course, slightly positive for, for the Eurozone in general. Not a big market mover, but I think we'll have a lot of focus on that. Um, um, open door to more hikes is my third point. Probably not now. Uh, more moves, not hikes, sorry, more cuts. Um, it's only three months, and we're expecting the implementation of uh, the implementation of um, corporate bond buys and TLTRO2 just now. So they'll say we we'll never say never, but not hint about anything soon. Helicopter money, I'm sure they'll be asked about that. That's the radical concept of basically giving money to um, the uh, consumers here in the Eurozone so that they'll spend money, 
I mean, bypassing governments, bypassing banks, they'll say once again another denial. I expect them to continue denying it until uh, a situation has warmed up. And in the future, I don't rule it out because I can't rule it out because uh, the ECB has a mandate. It doesn't want to fail its mandate. It doesn't want the euro to break up. Um, and we had other radical ideas become reality, like QE, like negative rates. Okay, so. They'll be asked about that and deny they had a discussion. If Draghi will say that they did have a discussion about that, even though a very light and short discussion, it could hurt the euro, okay? And the question that will not be asked is about something that is really practical. Yesterday I attended a conversation with um, uh, former finance minister of Greece, Yanis Varoufakis, he's here in Barcelona. Uh, in the University of Barcelona and the Department of Economics. And uh, I asked him a question about helicopter money. He said, you see, we doesn't need to drop money from helicopters. It will be enough to buy European investment bank bonds, EIB bonds. That means it, the investment bank of the whole Eurozone will get money, cheap money from the ECB that it could uh, lend or invest in the real economy that would be much better than what the ECB is doing now, and even more legal, for Faki said, than the current and useless buying of uh, German uh, boons, which are already very expensive, or French uh, oats, I think they're called. Anyway, buying government bonds in general, which uh, do not make any sense. Uh, and he convinced me with his agreement, uh, with his argument, sorry, but anyway, uh, this is not a, such a radical idea, and it could do much more to help. And I think it's a question that will not be asked. Anyway, these are the five points. Uh, the most important market mover is the fresh forecasts. I believe that if inflation, if they lower inflation forecast for 2016, 2017, and also 2018, it'll be negative for the euro. If it'll be basically unchanged, it could be relatively positive. But many things also depend on the tone and the open door on um, the mood, if Draghi is in a good mood, he's more optimistic, it's good for the euro. I mean, of course, it's not only his personal mood, but also uh, his assessment of the economy. And uh, if it's negative, it's negative for the economy. Okay, so these are the things to watch out for in this ECB preview. Let's also look at uh, levels for euro dollar currently, 112.13 at the time of the show, 112.50 is uh, first level of resistance followed by 113.35 and 114.60 on the top side, if we have a really bullish ECB. If we have a bearish ECB, um, 111.30, 110.70, and 110 to the downside. If we have helicopter money and uh, crazy announcements, uh, 108.20 and 107.10 are the levels to watch, okay? So that's the long ECB preview for today.